What is the difference between cobweb mold and mycelium? Let's take a look, guys. Yeah. What is up, everybody? This is Michael File Sage checking in here today. I hope you guys are doing amazing. I am up in the nightclub in space, and we are currently in the Quipper Belt. Quipper Belt, however you pronounce it. Look, I just run the spaceship, okay? I don't know. <laughs> so today, I want to talk about the difference between cobweb mold and mycelium. Uh, why? Well, because I've heard so many beginners over the years always ask, hey, is this cobweb mold or is this mycelium? And they show a picture of their substrate, right? Mm. And in varying conditions of health. And 99% of the time, it is always, always just mycelium. Very, very, very rarely. I don't, I can't recall the last time that it actually was cobweb mold. Um, and so let's talk a little bit about cobweb mold. Basically guys, it's sort of a term that encompasses all sorts of different molds. And also it's a lot rarer than a lot of people uh, make it see, appear to be, you know, like the fact that so many people are asking, hey, is this cobweb mold or is this mycelium? Goes to show that, you know, it's people think that it's quite common. And the fact is it's not a very common type of mold. In fact, this is actually the first time I've actually had cobweb mold on a grow. And I had this out in the open, right? Uh, <laughs> Um, just to show you guys, because I had this inside a bag, but you know, you can get the best look if you just open it. So I decided, okay, I'm gonna open it and just show you guys. So basically um, it's quite rare and it only usually happens during fruiting. It doesn't really happen inside grain jars or inside bags, right? Inside those sterile environments where you're trying to grow the mycelium. This is usually something that happens during fruiting. Oftentimes due to a combination of sort of contaminants, but also too much moisture, right? Too much moisture in your fruiting chamber, not enough air exchange. And a lot of molds start that way. Um, you know, a lot of fungi start that way. In fact, like verticillium, for example, will really, really like those kinds of environments. Super wet, you know, and not much air exchange. And the cobweb mold is no exception. Um, now, to identify cobweb mold, cobweb mold, I have to you know, remind you guys, is very, very simple. Now, a lot of people say, oh, you know, you just put some hydrogen peroxide in there and it'll start sizzling. Yeah, that's true, but you shouldn't even have to do that because it's so apparent um, because of the fact that it grows extremely fast. So this popped up overnight. This popped up overnight. Oh, and I should explain to you what the heck this is. So this is my stem buds from a Maz harvest, okay? Um, so from the Maz harvest, I put all the stem buds in here, as you can see. And this happened completely by accident. I had a bunch of like paper towels on there that I didn't, uh, that I just put on there because this is sort of like a trash bowl. And I moved the paper towel once because I wanted to put some more stem butts in there. And then I saw some pins. And so this is what they are. Now, also you can see how they're bluing, right? So as soon as I found the pins, I decided, okay, let's see how far I could take this. So I misted them because it was pretty dry, obviously, because it was open air, right? And well, then they immediately turned blue. Now, this is another thing that I hear a lot of beginners question. They're like, hey, I sprayed my substrate and now it's blueing like crazy. What does it mean? Okay, so what that means is that usually the difference between the dryness of the substrate and the moisture was just, basically it was so dry that the water sort of damaged the mycelium. Um, not in a bad way because it's better to be blue and moist than to be dry and and not fruiting, essentially. So basically that's what happened. The shock of the water to the dry uh, mushrooms and the mycelium immediately turned this thing whole, whole thing blue. Um, so that's basically what it is. It's not a problem. Just don't try to get it to that point. This is actually the first time that I've also had like bluing like this from misting due to dryness. And it's very, very apparent. So anyways, yeah, so this is the uh, cobweb mold. So they, back to the point, the easiest way to tell about cobweb mold is that they grow really fast, way faster than the mycelium. I mean, not to mention how different it looks, but I understand, you know, beginners don't really know, doesn't have this kind of, like literally it looks like cobweb, right? Mycelium is not this, uh, like the filaments are not this spread apart. They're a lot more concentrated. Like you can see here, this is mycelium, right? Actually, that might be cobweb mold over there. Yeah, that looks to be cobweb mold as well. Like this right here, this is mycelium, right? kind of hard to tell here but also you can see the color right it's a lot grayer now but gray is not the best indicator that right there is mycelium that's a good example right there and then this is cobweb mold right quite a big difference mycelium okay and cobweb mold 
So yeah, it, it's just sort of like really, really spread apart. It looks like a cobweb grows really fast. This popped up overnight. So what happened, right? So back to the story on this, what I did was I put paper towels on here, right? But I decided, okay, well, look, these guys are coming. Let's do it for real. So I put a Ziploc bag on here and I kept the bottom of the Ziploc bag open so and put it on my rack, which is open on the bottom. So I figured that, you know, probably it should be ample air, ample enough air, air exchange going from the bottom. But, uh, and I misted it and then I put it on and it wasn't ample air exchange. And lo and behold, what happens? You get this, this, ha this popped up overnight. Mycelium does not grow this fast, guys. Okay, so that's a big difference. Can you imagine, right? If if mycelium grew this fast, then nobody would be using liquid culture. They'd just be putting in an agar wedge and then, whoa, lo and behold, next day, fully colonized. It doesn't work like that, guys, right? So <laughs> this is definitely not mycelium. Um, so yeah, that's basically, I guess that's pretty much all I wanted to say for this video. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. And so final points a lot rarer than a lot of people make it out to be. First point, right? Cobweb mold is quite uncommon. And two, it usually comes up during fruiting due to lack of air exchange and too much moisture, like the case with a lot of molds. And see, the easiest way to tell if it's cobweb mold is the speed of growth. I mean, other than the physical, right? But again, as a beginner, you probably don't really know what the, uh, you know, the difference between mycelium and mold. You know, it's pretty simple after a while, but until you get there, uh, you might not know. But this is clearly, mycelium will never look this spread apart, the filaments. So yeah, guys, that's the video for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I will see you guys on the flip side. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Check out my main channel in the description. All the ways you can support me, genetics, mentorship, uh, discount codes from the best companies in mycology, etc., etc., all down there. You can join the Patreon for free fruiting content like this. Uh, coming up. All right, guys. Have a great day or night. Bye-bye.